I'm gonna date myself a little bit with this one, but one of the distinct memories I have from my childhood was sitting on the computer, playing Counter-Strike, and listening to Linkin Park's Hybrid Theory. Another thing that goes along with that memory is Winamp. The cool thing about Winamp was you could customize the heck out of what it looked like, and it became yours. It might not look good, and it might not function well, but it was distinctly yours. Today, the browser company is channeling their own inner Winamp, and giving you the ability to customize your browser and the sites that you use on it with the new thing that they call Boost 2.0. You'll be able to make those sites distinctly yours, and hopefully they function a little bit better than some of the themes on Winamp. Arc actually shipped the first version of Boost a handful of months ago, and it let you inject CSS and JavaScript into specific sites to make them your own. It was effective, but it was limited to those who knew how to program and to the sites that were painful enough that warranted you hacking away at them to make them better. Now with the new version of Boost, there's a UI that allows you to make common changes to websites without ever having to code at all. And with this version, I'm confident that everyone will get something out of Boost. I'm gonna show you three sites that I've personally boosted for myself to get you going. All right, so first we've got Reddit. And the things I noticed about Reddit initially is I've got this sidebar that I don't really care about. I've got this call to action to advertise and then popular and coins. And I'm never gonna use any of that stuff. So let's go ahead and clean some of this up. So you launch this by hitting Command T and then just type boost. And so we can boost the current page. You'll see a handful of things. First, you can change the color. You can change the casing if you really want to. You can change the sizing of things, which I really haven't played around with. And then I think the most important feature to this is zaps. So with zaps, you can get rid of whole pieces of content that you don't care about. So let's just tap zap, and then we can click on some elements. So I don't care about this sidebar. And so we can zap that element and now it's gone. But there's a containing element that we can still see here. So let's grab that one and zap that one too. And just keep zapping and there you go. That is a lot cleaner. I now have one single column to get all of Reddit, which is great. Let's also see if we can get rid of some of these other things we don't care about. I don't care about this advertise button. That simplifies that. I never use this popular button and I never use these coins either. And I think that looks pretty good. Not a whole lot else to do. I never get to the bottom, so nothing to worry about there. The other thing we can do here is we can make this our own by changing the color. In this case, I've already got dark mode turned on through dark reader, but this allows you to invert the lightness of the site. I could also just change the coloring. Let's say I just really want, I want Reddit to be kind of a orangey color because that's that's Reddit. I feel like they should embrace that a little bit more. Maybe, maybe I think Reddit should be green. I don't know. It really comes down to whatever you want it to be. In my case, I'm gonna stick with what they've got. But this is a whole lot cleaner than what I had before. One thing to note here, if you ever mess up, there's an undo button up here. It, it eluded me for a while. I thought this was a reset all. Uh, but just know that this is actually a one-step undo. And I don't actually know how to redo. Yeah, don't know how to redo. So good luck with that. Looks great. So that's Reddit. If you ever want to turn this back off, uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. One, you could delete the boost. That's probably the easiest way, but let's say you just need to temporarily turn it off. You can go to this all boosts and that'll open your sidebar and then you can turn this off to get back to Reddit the way it was. So now if I were toggle it on, Toggle it off, toggle it on, toggle it off. I like my version, it's a lot cleaner. Next up, Twitter. Twitter is even more clunky than Reddit, and so let's try and clean that up. So we're gonna do the same thing, boost, and the key thing here is zap. I don't want this sidebar at all. I could honestly be okay with even getting rid of search, but I'm gonna keep it simple for now. I don't need this footer either. I wonder, hold on, I'm gonna try. If I get rid of this, will it actually center? I don't think Twitter will center even if you move the sidebar, so not quite as cool as Reddit. I really hate this new notification bubble that they added, so let's get rid of this. Now I don't get any more phantom notifications from Twitter. Let's get rid of this explore because I never want to do that. I do need messages from time to time. I personally don't use lists. I also don't use bookmarks. I don't want Twitter blue. I might look at my profile from time to time and I'll leave that more in there. And lastly, I think Twitter should be blue. Yeah, something like that. The other thing you can do that I personally kind of like is changing this case and changing the font. I don't know why this just feels so much more welcoming than the actual Twitter. So here, let's, let's toggle this back off. It just seems so much more friendly and something I want to interact with. Kind of wish Twitter would take a slightly more informal stance, but yeah, 
don't worry about Twitter. The last one I'm gonna show you is YouTube, which I think could actually be decluttered a ton because they're trying to keep you in. And so let's do some things to try and clean that up. So the first thing is I don't ever want shorts. So let's get rid of some of that stuff. We're gonna zap, zap, zap. I don't need shorts. Library I use. I don't need this little filter bar here at the top. I don't ever speak to YouTube. Why can't I get rid of that one? Oh, there we go. And I don't want shorts here. I honestly don't need this little break. I think largely that looks pretty good. Again, we can clean this up to make it a little bit more welcoming. I personally prefer it to be lowercase because I, I can't remember who told me this, but I think there's some psychology around title case drawing you into things, hence why they use it in headlines for newspapers. So I've actually set everything to lowercase in hopes that it'll lead to me looking at less content on YouTube. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna blur these thumbnails so that I'm less likely to get baited by one of these thumbnails. For that one, we do need to go into the code, but it's fairly straightforward. So we're gonna to go to code, we're gonna add some CSS, and we're gonna use this little selector. So I click on the inspector tool and then I tap on the element that I wanna tweak. I can either grab the ID for this particular element or I can grab related fields and grab all of the thumbnails. And so in this case, that's what I wanna do. If I tap on that, it's gonna copy it to my clipboard. And then from there, we can style this a little bit. So in, in my case, I just wanna blur these. So we'll put a filter blur of eight pixels and we're good. And so now I won't get baited into those thumbnails. If I get really curious, you can still hover over them and you will get the actual preload, but the thumbnails themselves won't be blurred. From here, you just need to name them, hit rename this boost, and then you're good to go. You can share it out with someone else if you think you built something really great. Actually, I haven't done this yet. Maybe I should do this at some point. Hmm, I might actually share these. So that's a walkthrough for the Boost 2.0 feature in Arc. Would love to know down in the comments which sites you're gonna plan to boost with Arc. While you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'm gonna leave you with a tour of the Winamp Skin Museum. Until next time, have a great day. Like, this is, it's both wonderful and terrible simultaneously. But again, distinctly yours. Oh, that one's actually pretty cool. Again, the usability is sometimes a challenge, but it looks sweet. There's something for everyone here. Nice. I almost missed this. The People's Amp. Anyway, I'll leave the link for Winamp Skin Museum if you want to check out some more.